Why is it that 90% of people never actually build their app ideas? Is it because they don't know how to code? Mm, no, not really. Or is it because they don't have the best node code tool? Probably not. It's because they don't know the simple step-by-step -step process to go from idea to working prototype. In this video, I'll show you how you can cross the chasm and understand the building blocks in just three simple steps. We'll look at how it evolved from idea to app and how to understand exactly how to lay out the screens, components, and interactive elements. So you can get your first or 10th app built without wasting weeks. This is DraftFits, where you can build native mobile apps, responsive web apps, and internal tools visually. We'll be using this later in the video to take our idea to prototype. What if you built a car with no steering wheel? That would be crazy, right? And of course, you would never do that because before you build the car, you need to sit down and write out all the requirements for the project. The driver needs to be able to control where the car goes so that the car needs certain features, a steering wheel being one of them. This is called requirement gathering. And it's the first step to build your app because it will give you the clarity of what exactly to build and how to structure it. Let's take a look at the mobile app example. A user is going to need to do certain things. For instance, search for homes by location, save homes, send messages to inquire about a home. One simple way to break down your idea is to think about the objects of the idea. These are often nouns, people, places, and things. For an e-commerce app, products, carts, orders. For us, it's homes, favorites, messages, it can also be helpful to think from the angle of who the users of the app will be. For a marketplace app, you might have buyers and sellers. For a content editing tool, you might have admin, managers, editors. As these user and objects flow together, you'll start to see a linear structure of user needs, which is called a user journey. By mapping out the user's journey, we know all of the steps necessary for the user to accomplish their task. And more importantly, we start to know exactly what to build. For instance, the user might need to sign up or sign in, be able to search for a home, view a home, save a home, and eventually inquire or apply. Let's zoom into the core use case of our real estate app. The journey is simple. We have our splash screen, our login screen, our home screen, our property detail screen, fill in your details to schedule a call, and finally the success screen. And of course, this is the happy path of our app, but it's the core functionality of the app from signing in to booking and succeeding in scheduling an appointment. And that's why we build here first. Let's break down the first screen of the user journey, sign in and register. First, we need to break down the flow. What happens at each step? So let's take a look at the login and register flow and what screens are actually required. I would also call out opportunities to build components so you guys know how that works. So let's start with the login and register flow. The first one is the app loading splash screen. Then immediately we jump to educating the user about the product and how it could benefit them. If we scroll to the right, these three screens are each step of educating the user. And you can see that there might be potential to build components here. So that skip button that you see here, the progress button here, here, and here. Then you have, of course, the primary button and also the images. So these are all chances for us to build components, things we wanna reuse over time. This is a simple login screen, depending on how they wanna log in. Let's just say they click continue to email. Then if we jump next, you actually see three screens here. They are the same screens. The main difference is the components are showing different states. The one on the left here is inactive. No action is performed by the user. The middle 
is it shows it's active. Information is filled and you're ready to log in. See this button, the different states? And then on the right is the error state. Something is incorrect that requires the user's attention. When you're thinking about components, similar to these forms here, think about different states that might appear as an action is performed. There might be several things a user needs to do on each screen, like input email, input password, check a tick box and press a button. You might be thinking, okay, that looks relatively straightforward, but how do you do it? Now that we know what to build and the basic blocks for how to build it, let's build a simple mock-up app so you know how to start. Let's take a look at the example, the real estate app in DraftBits. DraftBit is a mobile app builder with a free version to access the source code. These concepts apply to any app builder. You can also access the source code if needed. First, we need to sign up for the platform, so let's click get started and type in our email address. Let's begin. So let's go to our components tab. And there's already pre-existing components that we could use. So here, let's build a view and place the component inside the view. Here is an icon, for example, you, we can select which icon we want. So let's build the back button and you'll be creating different components per screen that then you can reuse in other parts of your app. For example, the back button. So here we're building the first screen of sign-in or login. And now we can use our components in every screen to save time. For that, let's save our components as custom blocks. To do that, go to components section and click the drop-down menu choose save custom block and give it a name. Let's do that for each component. Now we can go back to the blocks menu and here we've got all the components that could be used multiple times across different screens. And that's it. Easy. We've just built an entire screen in draft bits. Let's go ahead and build the rest of the app. Here we have the interface on the left is your screens so we can really quickly jump into the different screens that we've built and also the reusable components that we've built for example the feature item the password input container to the top section really simple and easy to use let's just quickly go back to the screen panel here on the left it has all my screens so I can easily manage which environment I'm working on. Then I spoke about the component screen. If I'm reusing something multiple times, it doesn't make sense for me to build it for every single screen. It makes sense to manage this on tablet, laptop, desktop, I build it once and I could use it multiple times. So here we have the blocks interface. Every block is made up of certain components. So you can reuse it and edit a single thing within the component, which comprises of a block and it change throughout the platform. And we have a bunch of different ones that we've built as an example. And this is how you should think when you're building different items and elements within your app just so it's reusable and you don't have to do the work on every single screen and if we look here on the right you can see all the options for your layout how you can align it how you wrap the text and the content background where the padding is here we have auto how to position the actual item borders and a whole bunch of other stuff and of course, you can view the code and export that if you're interested. Now you're ready to really dive in and turn your prototype into a full-fledged app. Check out the next video to see how to connect some data, set up authentication, and do some testing.